Okay, should we just get this video done? Let's get this video done, because I have Big Brother to watch. And then I'm going to sit out here and I'm going to do my live reaction to Big Brother to post on my new channel, Peter's Reality TV Recaps and Opinions. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, I'm out of the Diet Pepsi, thank God, and I'm on to the Diet Coke. I'm using a Christmas cup today, a Christmas Tervis cup. I love these Tervis cups so much that are like double insulated. And this is the Grinch. You know, I know that Christmas is right around the corner and uh, so is Halloween. And now that the pool's closed and summer is over, I'm like, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Bring on the holiday season. I'm ready for it. So today um, we are going to talk about... Daniel Prada coming in, out in a video and speaking out against uh, Colleen Ballinger. Been waiting for this one. Knew it was going to happen. Knew it was going to happen, just didn't know when. It's been uh, several months now, which he addresses in the video. I actually uh, was sent the video by several people right when it came out. And I think it came out about six hours ago. It's currently right now in Indianapolis, 12.49 a.m. We just got done watching the uh, the newest Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It was so sad, you guys. I'm like sitting there. So Rocket looks so much like our dog Boo Radley. I know it's you know completely different species of animals, but he does. He looks so much like him. And um, I just like was sobbing through the whole movie. If you ha if you're a Guardians of the Galaxy fan and you haven't seen it yet, it's fantastic. I think it's probably the best one out of three, in all honesty. But it's it's sad. It's very it's a very emotional one. So I'll just give you a little heads up about that but anyway so people were sending me this video I had I'd watched it earlier and um, so the video just so you know what I'm talking about Daniel Prada did this video and the video is called hold on a second um, addressing the cancellation home renovation updates and new podcast and it's currently sitting at 16,000 views and um, it was posted six hours ago. Now, I will tell you, the video is, hold on just a second, let me turn, uh, turn this down so I can see. Um, it's on an ad right now. The ad is for the new uh, American Horror Story Delicate that comes out this week. I can't wait. I'm so excited about that. We're huge American Horror Story fans. Um, so anyway, okay, three, two, one, let's see. All right, here we go. So the video is 31 minutes and 41 seconds. And I think the part that he starts addressing the whole Colleen Ballinger situation is at about 25 minutes. So it's literally about, well, the last part of it, he talks about how he's going to Europe and he's shooting this skincare uh, photo shoot and all this kind of stuff. Um, so uh, that's like the last minute of it or something like that. He talks about it before and then he talks about it again. So the, the rest of the video is like picking out paint to paint his house and all this kind of stuff. A, 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 a typical Daniel Prada vlog, right? And so the, he slips it in there. Like, okay, so just so you know, like this is kind of a, if you've never like dug deep, like I've had to do and whatever, right? Like this is when like you know that you need to address something. And I'm going to be really fair to Daniel Prada, just so you know, okay? Um, I'm going to give him the fairest treatment in the entire world, Okay. I'm going to give him the fairest treatment in the entire world. But this is what you do when you know that you need to address something because people have been asking for it for months on end because every video that he posts, people are like, why are you not coming out and speaking about Colleen Ballinger? You unfollowed Colleen Ballinger, which he addresses in here, um, when that happened, and um, on and on and on. So he knew that he was going to eventually have to address it, right? So he slips it into the last five minutes of the vlog, which means that people have to watch 25 minutes of the vlog before they get to the Colleen Ballinger part, which is what they're there for, okay? To be honest with you, I don't think anybody's there for uh, him picking out paint in his house. Now, trust me, the reason I know this is because I do these kind of videos on my other channels. They don't garner a lot of views, okay? Me, me picking out plants from my front patio and stuff like that. There's a few people out there, I appreciate it, you know, that kind of eat those videos up, and I eat those videos up. I think they're so peaceful and soothing and stuff, right? But most people are there for the drama. Let's just be for real, right? Okay, so he, he sneaks it in to the very, last you know five or six minutes of the video so you have to watch the entire video to get to that part right now he's done this several times in several videos um that people have said did you hear that he talked about this or did you hear he talked about that and so i, I run over there and i watch the video and i'm literally like 27 minutes into it i'm like he hasn't said anything and then he talks about it for like a minute now this one he does address a little bit longer so i watched it the first time 
I watched it a second time. It's like this five or six minute clip, right? Because I wanted to make sure that like I had a good opinion about it. And then I just sat out here and I watched it um, another two times and took notes. And when I take notes on a video, I watch it at normal speed. Um, and I literally will watch like, you know, a sentence or two of what they say and then I pause it and then I, I write that down if I th feel like it's pertinent, right? So I really hear what they say. Now, the problem with this is this, okay? Is that when you've watched a video four times, and you're taking notes on it, and you're really listening and taking in everything that that person is saying, you start you start finding discrepancies. You start finding things that, like, they say something here, and then they say something there, and it's like they don't match up, and they're trying so damn hard to be sincere and genuine, right? Because they, they, gosh darn it, they just really want you to know how sincere and genuine they are, right? And I'm not saying that he's not. I'm just saying... When you start watching the video that many times and you start taking notes, okay, you, you, ca you catch some discrepancies. That's all I'm saying. What is there this big old June bug doing out here in the middle of September? There's this big old June bug and Boo Radley just came down here. He's all like sniffing around in the bathroom. Boo Radley! Hi, Boo Radley! He's doing, he's doing much better today. He, he was a little tired earlier. He's just like standing there staring at me as I'm filming this video. <laughs> He's like, Dad, don't I get to be in the video tonight? He's doing better than he was last night, so we're happy about that. Big old June bug up here. Listen, it has been an exciting day, okay? First of all, two days ago, I started my new TV channel, like I said, you know? Peter's Reality uh, TV Recaps and Opinions, better known as, That's My Opinion! With Peter Mon. Um, and so I started that two days ago, and I have... Today I posted my second video over there. Th yesterday I posted my first video, which is kind of like my welcome video, and um, and and listed all the shows I'm gonna be watching over there. And people gave me suggestions and stuff like that, so I added that to my list, right? Like uh, Love After Lockup and all these kind of uh, uh, Married at First Sight, all these these shows that people want me to watch. So I, I add those to my list, right? Today I didn't plan on doing a video on that channel because my plan was I was just going to relax today. I actually wasn't going to make any videos at all and I ended up making six videos. So I was just going to relax today and stuff, but my husband was just looking at Shakira live in concert TikToks. And so I was like, well, I, I might as well, uh, you know, just uh, sit out here and make a few videos. I was like, do you care if I film video? He's like, no, I'm looking at TikTok. Don't worry about it. I told you, like, TikTok's trying to ruin my marriage, you know what I'm saying? But anyway... So, we went to brunch earlier today, and I ran into a housewife. A housewife from Atlanta. Now, we, now if you don't know, we watch all the housewives. I'm going to be covering the housewives. And so I was like, is this the universe trying to tell me that me starting this channel is the right thing to do? Because it was a very specific housewife that is surrounded in a lot of drama. <laughs> and we're at brunch at a place that's usually pretty packed. And it's us at one table, and they're at another table, and we're both facing each other, okay? You want to hear the whole story? My friend Tanya Jean, she didn't call it out, because I called her, and she was on the video and everything like that, right? And so, if you want to go see that, go see, you wanna, if you want to go hear about that whole story, uh, go over to my new channel. It's listed below in the description box, and um, yeah, and then you can hear that whole story. Woo! It was a hot one. Hot potatoes, as Tanya Jean says. So anyway, um, so yeah, I'm so thankful for that. And I'm over 3,500 subscribers already. Like, I'm like blown away. Like, I'm like, this is the coolest thing. Like, maybe this is the direction I'm supposed to go in and I can, I can stop fucking talking about, you know, the Trisha Paytas's and the Shane Dawson's and the Jeffree Stars. And uh, God, thank you. Stop talking about the Daniel Paytas because they bore a snake, right? Okay, so, so many people started sending this video to me, right? And I actually, like I said, I wasn't going to plan any videos today. I definitely wasn't going to plan any videos tonight. But last night, I broke a crown on my tooth. <laughs> I truly, I did, okay? I won't show it to you. But I broke a crown on my tooth right here. A little Boo Rally just keeps on walking back and forth into the bathroom and out, into the bathroom and out. I'm like, I'm like so distracted watching him. We just took him out not too long ago, so it's not that. He just gets antsy late at night after he gets his medicine. Oh, now he's looking right out the door. Well, hi, Boo Rally. You want to say hi to all the people? <laughs> Should I show you guys Mr. Boo Radley on a Daniel Pride video? There he is, see? Hi, Mr. Boo Radley. <laughs> He's just looking right out the door. So anyway, um, anyways, what was I going to say? 
Oh yeah, the Daniel Prada video. So, I was like, okay, I have to go get this crown fixed tomorrow. I don't know how long I'm gonna be there, but I have a feeling that when I get home, I do not like the dentist, okay? I do not like the dentist. For those of you that watch my vlog and stuff, you know that I've had major dental work done in the last year, and it's just not fun, right? And so I'm not excited about this tomorrow, and I don't know how I'm gonna feel when I get home, so I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm just gonna make this Daniel Prada video now, and then I'm gonna watch Big Brother, and then I might film my live reaction to Big Brother when I'm done. That's what I'm thinking, right? So, let's get right into, and I know people are like, timestamp this, the, the official timestamp, Peter, there's so many official timestamps on this channel now. My favorite, I think, is the official Sally Joe timestamp channel. I think that's my favorite. But anyway, timestamp it, we're at uh, 10 minutes and 27 seconds if you don't want to hear the lead in to the, you know, the, the major drama of the world. Daniel Prada coming out and, and talking about Colin Ballinger. So, like I said, I'm going to be real fair about this whole thing, right? Okay, so let's get into it. Hold on a second. I probably should have some Diet Coke first. Now I've been drinking that Diet Pepsi for the last week, and I'm kind of like, well, maybe I think I like Diet Pepsi more than I like Diet Coke. I don't know. I've got so many notes because there were so many points in those five minutes that I had to, um, I had to go into. Okay, so... He goes this the whole vlog, blah, 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 right? And then he goes in and he starts, he says that he needs to talk, or he wants to talk about these Colleen Ballinger allegations. And he says in there, well, they're not allegations because all the facts are out there. Now, I want you guys, when I, when I read something that's a direct quote from him, I want you to read it, all right? <laughs> well, you can't read it because it's on my notes app, okay? But I want you to remember it. So when he says these are not allegations, these are facts, okay? I want you to remember that, like, the thing I notice is, like, I feel like he kind of went into this with some kind of script because when you start listening to it, he distanced himself from the situation. Like, he'll say that behavior or from, like, he'll say, like, that behavior is this or those things are that. Like, he doesn't say, like, Colleen's behavior, okay? And I know people are going to be like, well, you're splitting hairs and whatever. No, that's kind of a PR tactic, honestly, right? So that people cannot, like, take a soundbite of Daniel Prada saying Colleen Ballinger's behaviors are horrible, right? But as you get to the end of it, like, he, he seems a little bit more comfortable talking about it and a little bit more natural. And so he starts saying a lot of those things like calling this and calling that, right? Okay, so that's how he starts it all. He says he wants to talk about the Colleen Ballinger allegations. Well, they're not allegations. They're all facts. Or all the facts are out there is what he says. Then he goes on to say that they're horrific and scary, okay? The things that, that, that she's done. And that he's sorry to anyone who is a victim of that behavior, okay? Now, you have to remember... Daniel Prada's ex, Joey Graceffa, is one of, I don't, listen, and we're going to talk about this whole professional friendship, relationship bullshit that they all, like, we were just professional friends. Well, okay, but if you're just professional friends, like, they always use that to get out of it, right? Like, we really weren't that close. We were, like, this is a big part of this video, right? It's really a cover your ass moment. Well, if you were really that good a friend, if you really were only professional friends, like, first he comes out, and this is, like, the discrepancies, right? He says, um, like, I sent him the Gabby, I'm gonna address this in a second, he says, I sent the Gabby Hanna video, because uh, I think he has watched all of my videos about him, first of all, okay? Because it's like he kind of addresses each point that I've ever said. I mean, except for James Charles, who I just looked right after I watched his video for the fourth time, and... He has a lot to say about doing better in the future, and yet he's still following James Charles. This is where all the people come, and they go, don't tell him what to do. Well, he comes out and says that he's going to do better, and that he can't continue to support this behavior. But he's continuing to support James Charles. He said it in his video, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just repeating his words, okay? He said he was holding himself accountable. The video goes, well, I'm holding myself accountable. Well, I guess I'm not holding myself accountable. This is just, like, me needing to talk about this, right? Okay, well, whatever you said, you said you're going to do better, Okay? To the whole, you know, adage of when you know better, you do better. Well, you've been knowing better for a long time and you chose to ignore it. And now you chose to come out and speak about it. Which I have to just say, the first time I watched it, I was like, wow, I'm like really impressed with this. Like he addresses the Gabby Hanna video. He addresses coming out and saying that they were best friends and explains that. He addresses this. I was like, I, I stepped away from that video. I was like, I'm really impressed with this. The second time I watched it, I was still impressed with the genuine sentiment and how he, sincerity that he came across. But I will say that in a couple different instances, my Scooby-Doo Scooby ear went like that, okay? The third time I watched it, not so much. And when I was taking notes, I was like, mm, 
I feel like he knows he has to come out and talk about this at some point. He's getting ready to go to Europe. He wants to have a good trip on Europe because he's going to be doing a skincare thing. And he wants to hang out with his friends over there and just have a good time going out to eat dinner and getting dressed cute and stuff like that. So I better just get this Colleen Ballinger thing behind me before I go on this trip. That's literally what I felt watching it the last time. And I'm just giving my response to it. Y'all can go watch it. You can have your response. Okay, like I say, adult conversations over here. You can have your opinion and I can have mine, okay? So I'm watching, <coughs> oh my allergies. So I'm watching this and um, he says he hopes the victims can move on and even though, there ha even though there hasn't been a proper apology. So he's been watching this very closely, okay? So he knows that there's no apology. He knows about Trisha Paytas' nudes, which he references later. He talks about how he's been thinking about this and watching it for months on end. That he unfollowed Colleen Ballinger way back in June. Mm, it wasn't June because I was in Cancun on my birthday and that was June 29th and I made a video calling you out about how you were still supporting her. I think it was a good three or four weeks after that, Daniel. I know it's not important to you, but I think it's important to a lot of people, okay, that you just recently unfollowed Colleen Ballinger. And I actually did a video like the week after you unfollowed her about you unfollowing her. So we can go back and reference that video. But I think it was late July, early August that you unfollowed Colleen Ballinger. And why is that important? People are like, oh God, here it is again. Why is it important? Because he had this knowledge for a very long time, okay? Not to mention that he comes out and says in the Gabby Hanna video that he was lying. He talks about the Gabby Hanna video and he proves that he was lying in there. He basically says that he was lying in there, um, which we're going to address in just a second. Then he comes out and he says he unfollowed, uh, he unfollowed, uh, Colleen Ballinger after the Trisha Paytas video came out and the, the nude situation came out. Well, the nudes had been, they had been out for a while. The facts had been out for a while. You're talking about the facts, okay? And then you said you reached out to Trisha Paytas because you've known her for a while too, okay? But then you didn't unfollow Colleen Ballinger for several weeks after that. That's the truth, Daniel. I mean, like, if you're going to get in a video and you want people to buy into your story and you want to come across as sincere and genuine, that's great. Then sit in the fucking video and be sincere and genuine, okay? You could have said, I saw those nudes come out and I still couldn't unfollow Colleen because I had a relationship with her, whether it was professional or personal, and it had just been long going. And I don't even, to be honest with you, know when I unfollowed her. It was just not too long ago. But why you got to get in a video and say it was right after, like, I watched the Trisha Pay or saw the Trisha Paytas thing come out and then I reached out to Trisha. Oh, what a great person you are. Well, what about the victims that had spoken out two months before this with the facts, as you refer to them? But that wasn't enough for you. Those facts the victims came out and talked about, that wasn't enough for you to be so disturbed by Colleen Ballinger's behavior to unfollow her. You had to wait until Trisha Paytas came out and addressed it and talked about the nudes. And then you had to wait even more weeks than that. So it shows that you have no loyalty to Trisha Paytas, who you said you also knew. It's, it shows that you didn't really care about the nudes, okay? It shows that you really didn't care about the victims. It shows that you really didn't care about the facts. Because all of that was out there weeks and months before you unfollowed Colleen Ballinger. Now, I can say this, okay? I have had so many people come to me and say, you know, why is an unfollow not a much uh, enough? And so I will grant this, okay? Although I think these people need to come out and talk about it. And he even says that people need to come out and talk about it. He doesn't say it like that, but he says that, okay? So let's just say that an unfollow is enough, all right? So the you knew, okay, about, first of all, you, you got all your dates wrong when you're watching this video, okay? So you knew about the facts in early June, Okay, like when I'm sitting there and I'm talking about, you know, in videos about how he and Manny and Laura are going out to dinner and they're talking about this because Manny and Laura are two of his closest friends. And then he references things from that time period. So I was absolutely fucking right. They were having conversations about that. And then Manny MUA decides to get in the podcast with Laura Lee and say he feels sorry for Colleen Ballinger. They are all talking about it behind the scenes. Remember I speculated about that? And there was a bunch of you out there that said, um, well, that's not true. There's no truth to that whatsoever. Um, you know, and th no, they're not. And just because they're friends, just because they're professional. See... Daniel Prada is the one that started that whole t term, and now everybody's using that, okay? We weren't good friends. We were just professional friends. Well, if you were just professional friends, wouldn't it make more sense that it would be easier for you to unfollow and speak out against a professional friend that you have no real true relationship with it than it would be to talk against somebody that, I mean, then you'd be like, yeah, I don't, I don't fucking care because I have no ties to them. I have no allegiance to them. I mean, they're just, they're a professional friend. 
And you were with Joy Graceffa for how long? And Joy Graceffa knows everybody on YouTube, so I think you probably have a lot of professional friends, okay? You've spoken out against quite a few of them. You had no problem talking about Gabby Hanna and her horrific behavior. That video took you an hour, okay? And it's sitting at 5.6 million views. You had no problem coming out and talking about Jeffree Star and all these other people, right? So, but you're going to slip this in to the last six minutes of a vlog? Girl, you made a dedicated video of Gabby Hanna talking about how unprofessional the set of Escape the Night was. You made an hour-long video addressing that. And you want to talk about how serious... You, you referenced several times how serious these allegations are. And that they are facts. They are not allegations. But you slip it into the last six minutes of a video... And then you wonder why people take issue with you. And you don't, You can do a dedicated video to Gabby Hanna that's sitting at 5.6 million, 5 million views right now. Okay, you, you, That video did helped you a lot. But this is so serious. And Gabby Hanna was just a cast person on Escape the Night. You say Colleen Ballinger was on Escape the Night. You had a much personal, more personal relationship with, Gab, or with uh, Colleen Ballinger, even though you don't want to admit it, than you did Gabby Hanna. Went to her Christmas parties. She came to your Christmas parties. You were in her pregnancy video, which not only a few people were, okay? You say you only hung out a few times. Well, I looked up your pictures online. You have, you have more than a few times pictures with Colleen Ballinger. Just saying, okay? You can factually check that information out there. So I'm not really sure where you're coming up with that idea, what your definition of a friend is. I wouldn't want to be none of these people's friends, okay? Because the moment that they are in trouble and have to flip on them, they just say that they're professional friends. Well, I was never really your friend. I was just your professional friend. Well, if you're just a professional friend, you had no problem coming out and talking about Gabby Hanna in an, for an hour in a video, a dedicated video to Gabby Hanna, Okay. And I'm not saying that Gabby Hanna was right in that position because she wasn't, all right? But you had no problem coming out and talking about Gabby Hanna. You've had no problem coming out and talking about other people on Twitter. Like you said, people know I'm very vocal. Yet yeah, you are very vocal. But yet this serious situation, you slip into the end of a vlog where you're painting your house and announcing that you're going to Europe. It's so serious that you just slip it into the end. Get, get the fuck out of here. Like, and people want to buy this and go, I'm so impressed. Like, this is such a great apology. You know, and this is where people want to say, nothing that he does um, is good enough. Like, nothing that these people do will be good enough for you. No, I'm being really fair. I, sh I share with you, I watched it four times. How many fucking times did you watch it? I watched it four times and took notes. Did you? Did you, for those people that are criticizing me right now, how many times did you watch it? Did you watch, watch it one time and sang his praises about what an amazing man this person is, that he has sat on information for four months and chose to do nothing with it? And, it, and all the facts were out there as he refers to him, but it took Trisha Paytas' nudes coming out for him to actually unfollow Colleen Ballinger weeks after the fact, and he has the nerve to get in a video and lie about it? Okay. I mean, I watched it closely. I've got the unfollow date in my phone and my screenshots. I know, I know when he unfollowed her. So it wasn't when Trish Payas came out with that. That's not true, okay? He sat on it for a little bit longer. Something, uh, anyway, anyway. So let's get back into this video, okay? Because I'm getting into points I haven't even got to yet. He says that he hopes that the victims can move on and even though there, has, even though there hasn't been a proper apology, okay? So he acknowledges that Colleen Ballinger's uh, ukulele video, which I don't refer to as apology, but sometimes I do by accident. Um, but he acknowledges that, that apology video is not an apology. Okay, he acknowledges that, right? Um, then he says, um, it's been something he's been asked to chime in for a long time. And as someone very vocal, I'm not afraid to speak about things. And he goes in and kind of explains, like, why he hasn't talked about it and whatever. And he, and he goes in here and he references his own personal traumas and says that, um, that the, that this has been something that has been triggering for him to watch. Okay. Understandably so. I get that, right? And that it's been a little tough for him to watch all this go down. I totally understand that. I grant him that, okay? I grant him that that might be the reason that he didn't come out and talk about it, right? Um, there's a lot of people that are coming out that have had issues like that. I mean, I think that, um, and I'm not taking that away from him. That's, that's his truth and that's his story. You know, but um, there's been a lot of people that have been traumatized behind the scenes that are coming out and speaking out about these things and um you know there's 
victims of all kinds of abuse. I mean, Swoop has done like a four point part series at this point and has done deep dive investigations more than I would ever want to do because I, I think it, it's so hard to even talk about this stuff sometimes that from what she's doing, I can't even imagine, okay? And yet she shares openly about her history w with abuse in her life, right? And, uh, and that's her story to tell, not mine, so I'm not going to get into all of that. But she doesn't have a problem coming in and talking about this stuff and relating it to her own story and things like that, you know? So, I don't know. Like, hey, I feel for what you went through. I get it. Um, so many people that I know in my life went through similar things. I just guess I wish she would have come out and spoken about it sooner. Or I wish it, I wish she would have at least unfollowed her sooner what would have been my hope okay that i think that that would have shown that you really cared about the victims and you've cared about the facts and you cared about the story you know um to at least just come out with an unfollow and i'm being real fair right now because i can make some catty jokes but i'm not okay so um then he goes on to say that as someone with a platform and someone that has somewhat of a young audience this behavior is unacceptable especially um, s someone with her age. And he's talking about his own platform, right? And he says, children are supposed to be protected. And he says, if he doesn't come out and talk about it, it makes him a hypocrite for not speaking out about it, okay? Now, for all of you out there that wanted to just decimate me for saying, Daniel Prada doesn't have to talk about it. anybody that he Daniel Prada doesn't want to talk about. Daniel Prada just said in this video, okay, that if he doesn't come out and talk about it, that makes him a hypocrite, all right? So for all you out there that are defending the Daniels, they don't have to talk about anybody. Daniel said it in this video. He said that if he didn't come out and talk about it, it would make him a hypocrite because he always stands up for people. Okay? He said it. So now, I've been saying this stuff for two months now, right? And so many people have come for me and said, you don't have a right to call these people out, blah, 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 blah whatever, right? Okay, but then Daniel comes out and you guys sing his praises about it. Well, I'll accept my apologies in the comment section below, thank you, okay, for calling me horrific names, because all I wanted was for Daniel Prado, one of the people that was closest professionally or personally to Colin Ballinger, to come out and speak about it, okay? And trust, we're, we're within a week of Joey Graceffa coming out, because these two do things so closely together, because like he said, they had a business partnership and they were a duo, okay? So, and... Yes, he also said that they were boyfriends and he came into the, the YouTube world as a boyfriend, all that kind of stuff. I still don't buy it. It's whatever, but that's a whole other video. So, Joey Graceffa is going to turn right around and make another video. Like, this thing is going gonna, gonna to heat up, okay? So, anyway, um, he says it would make him a hypocrite for not speaking out about it, right? Well, like, all of this is so great, like, that you're saying it. Like, as someone with a platform that has someone of a young audience, you know, that you need to come out and talk about it. All right, but, like, what took you so long? Like, I don't get it, right? Like, I understand that this stuff is triggering, but, like, in all honesty, and, like, I've heard you talk about that in other videos. So, like, in all honesty, it would be, like, I mean, you want to talk about such a teaching moment to your younger audience. I'm, like, such a believer in turning my wounds into wisdom, you know? And people are like, well, Peter, you share so much online. You can't expect these people to. Daniel Prada shares a lot of really personal stuff online. If you've ever watched him for any amount of time, he shares a lot of really personal stuff online, right? So I don't, I don't know. Like for me, it's kind of like you could, this would have been such a fantastic, you're, you're now coming out in, in a video and saying this is why it was hard for you. You could have come out in a video and said this is really, really hard for me for these reasons, but I have a platform and for my audience out there, I need to talk about this. And if this helps one person out there, then this helps one person out there. I mean, you don't talk about a phenomenal video of turning wounds into wisdom, okay? And also talking about doing the right thing. It was really a missed opportunity that he could have come out w at the beginning of all of this and addressed it. Like, and then would have been the voice of reason, you know? And I'm not putting this on his shoulders because I think everybody's timing is different. Like I said, I don't, I don't wish on him what he went through. I think that's terrific, right? And I can understand that this is triggering for him. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of like... And like I said, I'm not putting this on him, right? But like, if he had come out sooner and spoke, like Trisha Paytas came out because the nudes were out, right? Like we know that now. That's why she came out, right? Uh, I mean, she had filmed videos with Colleen Ballinger or podcasts and things like that. So she wasn't planning on coming out and talking about Colleen Ballinger until them nudes came out. Let's just be for real. Let's call it for what it is, right? Okay. So if Daniel Prada had come out and been one of the first people to come out, I actually think a lot more people would have followed suit with that. But that's just my opinion, right? Like, I think that that would have inspired a lot of people to come out and kind of talk about it. So anyway, he says that that would make him a hypocrite for not speaking out about it, right? Okay, now this is going to stop. We're getting to the friendship part, so hold on. 
Okay, I'm right back here, see? Then he goes on to talk about how Colleen was in his life for a long time, all right? And then he says, we weren't best friends. We were good friends in a professional setting, okay? Then he references the Gabby Hanna video, which I've talked about a lot. We're in the Gabby Hanna video where he is just coming for Gabby Hanna for being the most horrific person on the set in the entire world, which let's just... Let's call it for what it is, okay? It's because Gabby Hanna came out and talked about Daniel Prada and Joy Graceffa and spread a bunch of misinformation and lies about them. So they're like clear in the air, right? I don't blame them one bit. I think they had every right to come out and defend themselves against Gabby Hanna, okay? And I think they did a fantastic job of it. I really do, right? And I think they also really showed who Gabby Hanna really is, okay? And so in that video, one of his defenses is something about like, I know, you know, you, you talk about touring and all this kind of stuff, like, and not being professional. Like, I know Colleen Ballinger, and Colleen Ballinger is one of my best friends. And he goes on to talk about how she tours and does all this kind of stuff. She sure do. Mm-hmm. She, she tours so she can meet up with all them friends she knows up in her uh, group chats. Friends, not fans. Friends. So, anyway, he goes into this whole thing about this Gabby Hanna thing, right? Okay. So I'm sitting there watching this. I'm like, okay, so you're now coming out. He he said he references the video. He doesn't say like, I'm sorry that I called her. He goes, I, he says something like, I should have. Did I have the notes for it? Hold on a second. He says the verbiage was incorrect. You used G Colleen Ballinger being one of your best, being your best friend. He goes, she's my best friend. She's one of, or you say she's one of my best friends. Okay, I've watched the video so many times. I don't even know. But you use Colleen Ballinger being one of your best friends as a defense against Gabby Hanna, okay? Then when you come out in this video, because you know that people are going to call you out for it and say, well, you were one of Colleen Ballinger's best friends, right? The last time you addressed this, Caddy Miss Sa Sassy Pants, okay, was in a... Uh, was in a, the comment section when somebody said something about it and you go, girly girl... Oh, this is the part where you don't you don't mind criticism that you'll come out and talk about anything. This is what you say at the end of the video. I don't mind criticism, especially if it's uh, constructive. And the comment said to you, didn't you say in the Gabby Hanna video that you were best friends with Colleen Ballinger, which I think is a really fair question to ask in the whole situation, right? And your response to that, as somebody that wants to have criticism as long as it's constructive and has no problem being asked questions and will stand up to do the right thing, your response to that was, girly girl, we were never best friends and I haven't talked to her in three and a half years. Well, girly girl, you came out in a video and you said it. Oh, but you got the verbiage wrong, right? You didn't mean to say best friend. You meant to say, I don't know, what? Not even a good friend, a professional friend? Okay, but let's go back and let's rewind, right? Be kind, rewind, like Blockbuster days. If you had come out in that video speaking to Gabby Hanna and you had said, I have a professional relationship with Colleen Ballinger, like I do you, Gabby. I have a professional relationship with Colleen Ballinger, so don't talk to me about what I know about professionalism. No, that doesn't quite have the ring to it as I'm one of Colleen, ba Colleen Ballinger is one of my best friends. You do not know, okay, what I know about our relationship. That was what you were trying to prove in that video. You didn't get the verbiage wrong, okay? You lied to 5.6 million viewers, and you've never come out and apologized for it. You've never said, yes, I lied about it. You said you got the verbiage wrong, okay? No, you didn't. That video was so calculated and contrived, and, and rightfully so. Like I said, I grant you that you had every right to come out and say that in the video. But you lied to 5.6 million people. That video is sitting at 5.6 million views, probably more when this video will be posted, right? Because it gets recommended to me literally every single day. So you lied to 5.6 million people, okay? That, that video brought you a lot of attention and a lot of like good things in your life, right? Rightfully so. You had a right to stand up to Gabby Hanna. But you got in that video and you said that Colleen Ballinger was one of your best friends, okay? You've never once come out and said, I lied about that in the video. Colleen Ballinger has never been one of my best friends. Now you're sitting here saying, five years later, four years later, that I got the verbiage wrong? I'm confused, okay? Because it doesn't benefit you anymore for Colleen Ballinger to be your best friend, okay? So let's just go and look at what your words are that you say in here, right? You said that you got the verbiage incorrect, 
okay? You say, I think we hung out only a couple times. Well, photographic evidence shows to the contrary. Video evidence shows to the contrary that she was at you and Joey's house, that you guys hung out with her, y'all went to each other's Christmas parties, things like that, right? If it was just the Christmas parties or maybe a video here and there, I would think like, okay, then this is just maybe like, it, I mean, I think all their relationships are professional. I don't think they really, any of them have real friendships, okay? Except for with James Charles. I don't know why. So then she had you over for the pregnancy video. You talk about that, okay? Then you go through all this content. Well, hold on a second. Then you say you're talking about going through the breakup and that it made you want to access who you wanted in your life. And then you said we weren't close friends, we were professional friends. Okay, that's when you say that. Well, I understand going through a major life change and wanting to assess the people that you have around you. I totally get that. I grant you that 100%, okay? But to then have to completely just say, like, we were never best friends, we were close professional friends. Girl, if you were never good friends, if you never really cared about her on any emotional level, why is it so hard for you and take so many months to come out and talk about it? There's been other people with traumatic experiences that have come out and spoken about it sooner. I'm not saying that you weren't triggered by it. I'm not taking that away from you. Like I said, I feel horrible for your experiences growing up, right? But there's been a lot of people that, I mean, and, and like just and, and just to be fair, you know, okay, so that kept you from unfollowing her for so long? You were so triggered that you couldn't unfollow her. Like, explain that to me, please. Okay, I can understand that it was so triggering that you didn't want to come out and talk about it, all right? I still would have liked to have something sooner, but it was so triggering to you that you couldn't push the unfollow button on Twitter? I'm just asking questions that I, that I see when I watch a video. I'm not being mean. I don't hate on Daniel Pareda. I don't hate him. I don't even know him, okay? I'm just responding to a video that he chose to put out there. So then he goes through here and he talks about... Um, He's never been somebody who's afraid to speak up. He talks about, I will do better moving forward. Still follows James Charles as of 1.24 a.m. Um, on Sunday going into Monday. He even says, I know I've aligned myself with certain people. I have socially supported certain people that have exhibited, exhibited problematic and dangerous behavior. These are his exact words. I'll be better. This has been on my mind for a long time. I've never been someone who's afraid to speak up. I will do better moving forward. I know I've aligned myself with certain people. Who else besides Colin Ballinger are you talking about? Are you talking about James Charles? Because everybody in your comment section is. I've socially supported certain people that have exhibited problematic and dangerous behavior. Okay? James Charles that came out in his Holding Myself Accountable video and took responsibility, okay, for talking to two underage people, then took the video down, all right, and you guys all covered for him for years. In fact, isn't it true that just this year, you put up the birthday cake from James Charles on your Instagram that says, and you did it at my birthday dinner, and you thought that was funny. So not only have you supported these people, gone to their launches, you've gone to their houses for dinners, you've hung out with them at their houses. It's been all over your Instagram. Daniel, I have followed you and all these people for years. I just recently unfollowed everybody, okay? You've been hanging out with James Charles and all these people for years, okay? Quit acting like it's a professional relationship unless everything in your life is professional, which might be true because you did come out and say, you don't do anything unless there's money involved, okay? Which I think is a really sad sentiment. You want to come across as like this really nice, caring guy that gives a shit about plants and stuff like that. But then you make a comment like that. Like, I don't even understand why people are on Twitter anyway. Because there's no point to be over there if you can't make money. You don't do anything unless money's involved. So do I, am I surprised that you throw these people to the wind when they're no longer useful for you and they're damaging your career? But when they're helping you, you stand behind them even if they're problematic? Fucking A, I do. That's called a leech. Okay? And that's what you are. And that's what your entire your entire career on YouTube has been. Hanging out with all these different people and riding their coattails. That's the truth, Daniel. Okay? I, to be honest with you, like, I'm sitting there and he's talking about how he's doing this whole skincare thing. And I'm like, he gets less views on his videos than I do. He don't even get that much of a following on Instagram anymore. He's got a lot of subscribers that he got when he was dating Joey. But he doesn't even get that many likes on a picture anymore or a reel. I'm like, who is... And this is what I'm talking about, right? When you go and you look at that, you see the numbers that he has 347,000 subscribers on YouTube, but he's getting less views of video than me, right? Even when he's talking about Colin Ballinger, I ratioed his ass today on videos, okay? 
So, and that's fine. Like, I don't care. Like, I mean, there's smaller, bigger channels than me, okay? But, like, you have 200,000 more people than me, and you're getting less views than me. Who is giving you, who is, who is having you be part of this skincare line with your public persona that you faked your way to the top with your relationship with Joey Graceffa? I'm just asking, okay? Or are they looking at those 347 subscribers, like, I'm not afraid to have a channel that has two, four hundred, six hundred views on it, like my Peterism's channel. I love it. Never gotten a sponsorship for it. Don't care. That's I've never been in the game for that over there. You know? My Peter Does Stuff channel, my review channel, my vlog channel, none of them get tons of views. I still post over there every single day. I love it. Couldn't keep me from it. It's not all about money to me. You know? I love it. I, I love coming up with them videos and putting those videos out there and doing all that kind of stuff. But Daniel Prada, he doesn't understand why anybody would be on Twitter because there's no money to be made over there because he doesn't do anything unless there's money. Well, Daniel Prada, if you care that much about money, you want you might want to start disclosing affiliate links appropriately, okay? Because one of these days, I'm just going to have had it with y'all and I'm going to just report all of you to the FTC, okay? Detailing every moment that you've done it. And I've got it all in my phone. And that's not a threat because I'm not there today, okay? I don't got any plan to do that. I'm just saying one day, I might just be like, fuck this, okay? Uh-uh. People are working you know, 40, 60 hours a week and have two jobs to raise their kids and y'all are faking your way to the top and not disclosing affiliate links. You can't even disclose your affiliate links legally. You can't, and, and you can't even disclose your affiliate links legally, right? And that affords you three months in Europe. Get the fuck out of here, okay? And people want to say, that's not very nice that you would call out these people for that. Seriously? But there's people that are standing on their feet for 12 hours a day at Taco Bell you know, and then they're going home and they're, you know, getting their kids bathed and putting them in pajamas and doing homework and feeding them. And then once they get them all in there and their mom comes over to watch them because they can't afford to pay anybody else, they go out for their second job at 10 o'clock at night and they work until 5 o'clock in the morning and come home and go back to Taco Bell again. And Daniel Prada can't even disclose an affiliate link or Jaclyn Hill or Laura Lee or any of these people. And you guys want to feel sorry for them? Get, give me a, get, get seriously, get fucked, Okay. Let's get in the real world for a little bit and see what people's real lives are like. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So he says he's going to do better and, he, and he's, he knows all day he's been hanging out with these problematic people. I'd like to know who you're talking about. That you've aligned yourself with certain people. You've socially supported certain people. Who are you talking about, Daniel? Because you already came out and said that you were never that close with Colleen. That you just had a professional relationship with her. You haven't unfollowed James Charles, which I'm assuming that doing better and being better would mean that you're going to unfollow James Charles. I literally just looked before this, okay? I took a screenshot of it, so I have proof, all right? So I just looked right before I filmed this video, and you are still following him. So where, who are you talking about that's problematic? I, I'm confused about this, okay? Then he said he doesn't want to be someone who only stands up for things when they're not affected by the behavior of others in their life. That statement, and that is the exact quote, is so confusing to me. I don't even know what that means. I don't want to be someone who only stands up for things when they're not affected by the behaviors of others in their life. I think what you mean by this is you don't want to be somebody, okay, that won't come out and talk about things if it's not directly affecting you. Because you referenced that several times in this video, that it wasn't affecting you, so you didn't come out and talk about it. Your team tells you not to talk about it because you're not directly in it. What did they say? Um, hold on a second. Was told by his team to not discuss it because it didn't involve him. Well, you're helping these people have platforms, Daniel, by going to their Christmas parties, by being in their pregnancy videos, you're helping them to come across as being these really nice, caring, loving people, okay? So you are involved in this. You've helped them build those reputations. I don't know how you don't see that, okay? Then he um, goes on to say, the whole situation is so serious and it's so unfortunate that it ever had to happen, but moving forward, I can use my voice and I can be outspoken. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm waiting for that. I think this was a really good start. I do, okay? I'm not afraid of criticism, especially if it's constructive. Okay, I'm going to remember that here in just a second, Daniel, okay? No, note it, okay? That you, you don't mind criticism as long as it's constructive. He said he was told by his team to not discuss it because it doesn't involve him. Then he said he unfollowed her after Trisha's video. And I put on here, why did it take that when you say the facts were already out there? Like, if the facts were already out there when Adam McIntyre came out and talked about this, and, and all, I mean, you referenced the victims, you know who they are. Why did it take until three weeks after Trisha Paytas came out and spoke about it 
Which that was not in June, by the way, for you to unfollow her. And I know you didn't unfollow her in June because like I said, I made a video <clears throat> either after I came back from vacation or while I was on vacation talking about Colleen Ballinger's problematic friends that support her. And I think I put your picture in the, in the video. I know that I talked about you because that was when I talked about the girly girl thing for the first time, okay? And that was the very end of June because we were there over my birthday, which was the 29th of June. So by the 29th of June, you had not unfollowed Colleen Ballinger. That is straight up a lie. So this is now two videos that you've lied in, okay, about majorly serious issues that you say are serious issues, okay? So did you get the verbiage wrong again or are you a liar? Like, that's what I want to know. Just come out and say it. Just come out and say, I lied in the Gabby Hanna video because I thought it would make it better. My point would be stronger if I came out and said that Gabby, that Colleen Ballinger was my best friend. Or come out and say, Colleen Ballinger was my best friend. We don't really talk any, we haven't talked in three and a half years. I don't know. You lost her in the relationship. Okay, that happens. We all know that. You could have come out and everybody would have understood that. Yeah, I used to hang out with Colleen Ballinger a lot because she's one of Joey's best friends. And when Joey and I were together, we hung out all the time. But now that when Joey and I broke up, I didn't stop. I, that's Joey's friend. I stopped talking to her. Now, it wouldn't take an idiot to, or a brain surgeon to figure that out. Every idiot in the world has gone through a breakup and has lost friends to the other person. I have. Everybody else has. I think we'd understand that. It doesn't have to be this concocted thing of this is what it took and it was these facts. And it's like, who, I mean, who's in the escape room with James Charles on Escape the Night? Like, I mean, this is like the game of Clue to me. Okay, watching this video. Go back and watch it a couple times and, and tell me that you didn't get the same thing, okay? This sitting up against a wall, well, I really need to talk to you guys because this is like a really serious thing and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff and blah, 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 okay. You're right, it is a really serious thing. Okay, so then he goes and he says, I should have, I know I should have spoken up sooner. So don't you fucking come to me and tell me, okay, anymore that I cannot say who should speak out about this. He is acknowledging that he should have come out and spoke about it sooner, okay? And yet he still has people coming in the comment sections defending it that he doesn't have to talk about whoever he wants to talk about. And he said he should have talked about it sooner. Make that make sense. The math ain't math then. Then he goes on to say, it wasn't directly affecting me, but it was reflecting upon me. Now, I have to tell you, okay, in the three months that I've been covering this bullshit, talking about the friends supporting James Charles and Colleen Ballinger, I did not think that the voice of reason that would come out and support me would be Daniel Prada, okay? But right here at this statement, right here, Daniel Prada, okay, somebody that had a professional relationship with Colleen Ballinger said, it wasn't directly affecting me, meaning he was not one of Colleen Ballinger's friend, or victims, right? But... It was reflecting upon me. And what he's saying by that is that her behaviors were reflecting upon him because he was somebody that was personally or professionally in a relationship with Colleen Ballinger. And if he didn't come out and speak about it and he says I should have spoken about it sooner, then it reflected on wh who he was as a person. It's exactly what I have been saying about Manny MUA and all these people and Laura Lee Daniel Prada, Robbie D. Christie, all these people, okay? And yet, I'm the wrong person in this. Well, Daniel Prada just came out and said I wasn't the wrong person on this. So thank you, Daniel Prada, for that validation. I appreciate it. <clears throat> then he goes on to say, I will be moving, I will be better moving forward. Okay, well, before we get into some of the comments that were on the video, I just want to second check this, okay? Video's now been up for about seven hours. Let me look it up. Here it is, Daniel Prada. Just looked him up. Let's make sure, okay, let's see if he uh, um, is still following James Charles. I'm looking up his name. <coughs> He's still following James Charles. Third one down right here. I'll screenshot that so I have that for later. Then let's go into his pictures. I can't remember when he did this photo dump. Hold on, I think this might be it. Uh, chapter 30, falling in love with my life again. Here it is. Chapter 30, he's got a picture with Manny MUA, taking a picture on a sink. Okay, this is the cake one, so let's see if the cake is still up here. Or if he took it down. Oh, he must have taken it down. All right, good for you. Looks like he took the birthday cake down. Well, that's impressive. Thank you for that. Or was that the wrong one? <clears throat> oh, wait, this is one that says been happy lately. Why do I think this is the one that is the birthday one? Hold on a second. It is... Here it is, June 2nd, been happy lately, and right here is the James Charles infamous birthday cake, and you did it at my birthday dinner. It's right here, okay? You can go look on Daniel Prada's uh, Instagram. Here, I'll screenshot this too, so he can just say he used to follow all these people socially and support them. Well, you still do. You still do, okay? <coughs> so then when you go underneath here and you read the comments on this video, which is very interesting to me, 
The number one top comment, which has 201, 11, 201, 211 likes on it, says, why do you associate with people who are friends and support people like James Charles? And somebody said, what's wrong with James Charles? And this person said, are you for real right now? <laughs> Live for that comment. Here somebody said, just because somebody's friends with people that associate with someone you don't like and or is problematic doesn't mean that they support it. People are allowed to have one-on-one uh, -on -one friendships that don't involve anybody else in their lives. Okay, I agree with that. Except for that your good Judy Daniel Prada that you're defending right now. He said in here, okay, that um, he doesn't want to be someone that stands up for things when they're not affected by their behavior or others in their life. He said that, okay? He also said that it wasn't directly affecting him, but it was reflecting upon him. His friendship with James Charles reflects upon who he is as a person. It's also interesting to me that he came out and told this story about what he had gone through when he was in high school, okay? But then there are other teenage boys that are going through similar incidents by the hands of James Charles, self-admittingly, and he doesn't take any issue with James Charles. He takes a huge issue with Colleen Ballinger now, right? Like, this is really serious. We need to talk about this, okay? We need to talk about this, but James Charles, he can continue to follow and post pictures of the birthday cakes, and he can make jokes about it, right? Like, this is such a serious topic to him, and we must protect children at all costs. This is where I lose, like, I've lost it, okay? This is where I'm like, okay, so this video is performative. This apology is performative, all right? Because you want to get in here and talk about how you care about kids and how important children are and what you've gone through and blah, 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 blah. And this whole situation has been triggering for you. Is it not fucking triggering for you of what James Charles did to these people? Is James Charles not hurting kids? They're under the age of 18. The two, pe the two victims that we know of. He said it in a video. He validated it. And you've been friends with him all this time. You guys were either gonna, even going to put him on Escape the Night that following season. Isn't that true? So you have followed James Charles, gone to dinners with him, out to dinner with him at Catch and places like that. You've gone to his house. You've done all kinds of things. You went to his launch with Laura Lee. It's not just a professional relationship. Quit with the bullshit. This is my thing, right? Like, if it was a professional relationship, it would be so easy for you to come out and speak about these people, right? If you had no emotional ties with these people. But if it's a friend, it's harder to come out and speak about it. That's why you don't. Let's read some more of these comments, shall we? These people that want to defend him. Um, Y'all need to stop trying to control what people do. Nobody can tell others who they can and can't talk to, for fuck's sake. Okay, and then this person said, that's true, but you can't be mad at me ju judging someone for watching James knowing he admitted to being inappropriate with minors. Amen. And then it goes on and says... um. Well, he is talking about standing up against abusers all while being friends with James. I don't like the hypocrisy. Didn't he come out in the video and say that he didn't want to be a hypocrite? He said that. Those were his words. Y'all are defending this person, okay? Um, people are going off about James Charles and all this kind of stuff. So then the next comment down, I'm reading the top one straight down. Okay, better late than never. I didn't have a problem with your not speaking up about Colleen, but I appreciate that you're addressing the situation now. Enjoy Europe and stay brave and honest. 21 likes, no comments. The next one, better late than never. Much respect to you for speaking up. And I will say this, like, I am glad that he spoke up about it. I am. Now do the right thing and unfollow James Charles and stop hanging out with an admitted predator. And if you, if, 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 because you obviously just have a professional relationship with him, right? You're just going to launches and things like that. So that shouldn't be a, a, a hard friendship for you to sever and stop protecting a, a, you know, a self-proclaimed predator. So if you do that, then listen, it aces with me. I'll be like, okay, I guess I accept this performative video where you, you, you constantly contradict yourself and you say you want to do better, but then you don't do better. Okay. Okay. I guess I, I guess I buy it. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Um, somebody said, firstly, I want to apologize. I read the comments first before watching your statement. Honestly, thought you were going to address James Charles. I did too. I, I watched this video. I thought he's going to come out and talk about James Charles in this video too. And I'm going to be so fucking impressed. And I was like, I'm going to make this video and be like, you guys listen, I have rode hard for Daniel Prada for months now for supporting Colin Ballinger and James Charles. And I am so impressed with what he did in this video. Because I do think, even though he only cares about money in his career, like, I think there's a part of Daniel Prada that is good inside. I don't know what James Charles has on him. 
okay? I mean, they must have just passed around their grinder to each other and saw who they were all talking to or something, and they got shit on everybody, all right? I don't know what they're telling each other, that they are so afraid that James Charles is going to come out and speak about it, but they are so, all of them, protective of James Charles, you know? Do y'all have stock and painted? Is that what it is? Do you, Laura Lee and Manny, all have stock and painted? If that comes out down the road, that you guys bought and, and have stock or have a part of painted, and so you don't want to come out against him because then you're going to be coming out against your own business. If that comes out later, that amidst all these allegations, the James Charles allegations, which are confirmed by him, have been out for years. So if it comes out that after those allegations, you guys invested in the pockets of a self-proclaimed predator, you have not even heard me get started about this yet. Like, seriously? Okay. So, my battery died while I was reading comments, and um, I went inside to get another battery, and then I just started, like, messing around while I was in the kitchen. Does that ever happen to you? You get completely distracted. It's been, like, a half an hour. And so, I finished my Diet Coke, and I made a cup of tea. So, I'm drinking tea now. And I made these cookies earlier. Not homemade. I'm going to be reviewing them tomorrow on my review channel. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, I finally came out here with the camera and I was like, okay, I just need to finish this video. So I think it, 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 the battery died while I was reading the comments. I think I'm done reading the comments. I think I'm done discussing this. I think I've said what I needed to say. Um, you know, it is what it is. And I hope that um, Daniel Prada chooses to continue to do better. I hope that for myself. I hope that for all of us. And I hope that he rethinks his stance on James Charles, especially since people are asking it in the comment section below. So we'll see. We'll see. And um, I think this is a start. And um, yeah, I don't know. I have so many conflicting thoughts about this. I don't really know what to think. I mean, it's been a half an hour now, so I'm a little calmed down. <laughs> I'm a little calmed down and... Um, yeah, I need to uh, I need to get to watching Big Brother. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.